this thing on. Good morning all you crappies out there and those of you first time joining me. Uh, my name is Davis, Flopping Crappie on YouTube. And today we're going to simplify things for those of you who probably came to the video wondering how to go fishing from shore, how to kind of take your kids fishing if you've never fished before. So I'm going to walk you through a basic setup of how to uh, rig your rod for a fixed bobber to fish from shore. I saw a few videos of these already. I feel like they could have done a little bit better job going into detail on a couple things. So to start with, we got your rod here. This is a spinning rod. For those of you probably taking your kids fishing, you have a rod that looks like this and there's a, th or there's a thumb button at the top. That is called a spin cast rod. Really doesn't matter. You're gonna need some sort of line. I'm gonna put on, this is six pound test. I'm gonna put that on today because I also fish for bass with this rod. I need something a little bit heavier. If you're fishing for mainly panfish, bluegill, crappie, um, yeah, sunfish, four pound test or lighter. You can go three or two pound test if you want. So either one of these two works great for some. Then you're gonna need some weights. Um, this is just a pack of assortment of weights. I think they're like two, two or three bucks for that. Then you're gonna need some hooks. Now if you're fishing from shore, you're probably fishing for panfish or, or bass or something. Um, this is actually a great live bait hook. This is a size four um, octopus hook. And then of course you're gonna need your bobber. This is a generic Pretty much a one dollar bobber you can get at walmart actually you'd probably get them in cheaper cheaper packs than that so then the uh the non-tackle essentials you're going to need some sort of pliers one to pinch the the weights on the line and to get the hook out of the fish's mouth actually that one will be to pinch the weight on the line this one if you're fishing with for panfish this is a good one to have some sort of small needle nose to Take the hook out of the fish's mouth if it gets way down in the fish's throat. You don't need both of them. I, I just have both of them. So, but you do need. You probably want one of them. And then, of course, the essential toenail clipper to actually cut line. Honestly, any fingernail clipper will work. So, let's get to putting the line on the rod, actually on the reel, and I'm going to show you how to do that right now. All right. First thing we're gonna do, get rid of that line because we're not gonna use that line. We're actually gonna be using this Suffix Pro Mix six pound test. Um, the only reason I'm using this one is because I use this fishing rod for bass and I need something a little bit stronger when I'm drop shotting. Uh, but if you're fishing, ouch, if you're fishing panfish, four pound test is Berkeley Trilene. Both of these were fairly inexpensive. Um, I honestly don't remember how much they were, but they weren't, they weren't as expensive as let's say this here. This uh, braided line, this is 50 pound braid. That was expensive. Most braided line is. But we're not going to be using that today. Actually, I'm only going to be using that to show you how to uh, tie the hook on. That way you can see the line better and all the loops better. I figure you'd appreciate that. So the first thing we're going to do, we've got a rod here. And we're going to take the tag end, which is the end of the line that comes off this, this reel here. Take this tag end. And we're going to put it through our first eye loop closest to the reel, okay? So that's usually the biggest one, the biggest eye loop. And you're going to pull the line all the way down to the reel. Now, there's a couple different ways you can put the line on the reel itself. Probably the easiest one, you see this little plastic piece right here. You can actually take the line and put it underneath that. There's a little notch. It actually pops out a little bit. And then you can close the bale. You can wrap the line around it once and then just start reeling slowly. And as the line uh, gets on there, it'll build pressure and it'll actually hold more line on. The only problem with that is if you, uh, you ever run short of line and you cast a lure out, the line will come off. Um, so I don't know if we want to start with that. The second way is also fairly easy. You can just tie a what they call a granny knot. And all you're going to do is you're going to, if I can ever get the reel reel right here. Make sure you have your bale open by the way. Make sure this is this is open. That's a key key part. So you're going to just take your line and you're going to loop it around the back side of the reel. So it's like this. So you have it like that. And then you're just going to tie two granny knots. Just like that. 
kind of that first knot when you're tying your shoelace. That's all I'm talking about. You're going to do two of them. And you're going to make sure the line is as t that knot is as tight as possible to the reel itself. Just like that. Then you're going to take your clippers, very helpful, and you're going to clip close to the the actual knot. I like to clip I like to leave about a quarter inch just for safety. Just in case uh, you ever do run completely out of line, it's got a little give. The, the knot might be able to slide a little bit. Then what we're going to do is close this. We're going to make sure our, our drag is somewhat tight. Yeah, that's that thing. That's that thing. All right, enough messing around. We're talking serious business, teaching kids how to fish. So the first thing you're going to do is actually have a little bit of slack line from the spool of line that you're taking the line off of. And the reason you want that is because you want the line to actually stick to the reel. If you got, if it's too tight, it will actually just spin around the reel and you don't want that. So just leave a little bit of slack line. You can slowly start reeling. Whoops. Not too much though, otherwise it gets into this part. You just want it on, on this part of the reel. Slowly start reeling. And as you keep reeling, you'll be able to see that the line will get tighter and tighter on the reel itself. Now, eventually you can just hold on, you can put your hands holding that line between your fingers closer to the, uh, the large eyelet that you put the line through in the beginning. And you can kind of pinch down on the line to make it uh, a little tougher to reel. And that's just gonna make the line stick on the reel better and when you cast, you won't have loops uh, of slack line coming off. So I'm going to keep reeling this line up and I'll show you how much I'm going to put on in a second. Now I'm hoping you can read this. It says line capacity, and I'll say this on almost every single reel that you buy. It says line capacity in yards to pounds. And the first one they have is 250 for six pound test. So I can put 250 yards of six pound test line on this reel. Get a smaller spool of line like this, like this says 330 yards, these smaller spools, you can probably get line that actually matches um, what you need to put on here. So a smaller spool like this, six pound, I could probably find one that comes close to 250 yards. And that way I can just reel the entire spool of line onto my reel. So here's how I know I'm gonna stop. I like to leave anywhere between an eighth of an inch to maybe a little less than a quarter of an inch of space. So I'm getting pretty close here. Um, I'm gonna reel a little bit more. I'm probably gonna reel, I don't know, right about there. And then that'll be my, my stopping point and we can get the, uh, the hook tied on. All right, that's pretty good for right now. So the next step you're gonna do, you're actually gonna pull out some excess line here from the spool that you just reeled off of. You're gonna clip it like that. And now we're gonna make sure our drag, I think I was talking about our drag earlier. We're gonna loosen the drag up. Then we're gonna grab the end of our line coming through our big eye, eye loop here. I'm gonna pull out some excess line. And then we are going to put the tag end of the line. That's this piece right here through the rest of these eye loops. Now make sure they don't get wrapped around the rod. Um, yeah, that's pretty much it. Don't get wrapped around the rod. Okay, so now it's all tied, or it's all uh, through the entire rod. So the next thing we're gonna do is actually tie on our hook. But these are a little small and the line is clear, which means they don't show up great on camera. So I actually wanted to show you how to tie this knot on this hook, which is a flipping hook. Not really important for this how-to tutorial. This is actually mainly for bass fishing. But the knot that bass fishermen tie on this hook is the exact same as the one we're gonna use for these hooks and it's for a very specific reason actually. So the first thing we're going to do, we're going to take our hook like this, 
we're going to take our line and we're going to take our line this way away from the hook tip through the hook eyelet like that and you're going to pull out I don't know six seven inches of line. Now pinch the line and the hook eyelet together and you're going to take that that line you pulled through and you're going to pinch it to the hook shaft all the way down to where the hook starts to bend. So I'm going to pinch it with my fingers right there. Okay, and then you're going to let the uh, the eyelet go and you're going to take the tag end of the line you're going to double it back. Now I've created this loop here. Now what we're going to do is we're going to wrap this tag end around both the hook shaft and the line that we have running alongside our hook shaft. All right, we're going to wrap it around about five or six times. So all I did looped it back over. Now I'm going to wrap it around the hook shaft and the line and I'm still holding with my left hand that line against the where the hook starts to curve. I'm just going to wrap it around and that's probably good. And then we got the tag end of our line coming this way that we wrapped around the shaft of the hook. And what we have here, I'm going to actually pinch all the wraps that I made. We got this little loop, okay? We're going to put the tag end of our line that's right here through this hoop. I'm going to take the tag end of our line here and put it through the loop. Right, so now we have our line hanging out of our loop. You're actually going to pinch the tag end of the line with the bottom of the hook, not the, not the loop. You're going to let that slide. All these wraps that you wrapped around the hook shaft and that line, you're going to slide up to the hook eyelet, just the bottom of it. Now we got them above that little plastic piece, now it's going to be easy. We're actually going to take the line that goes back to our rod tip and I'm going to start to pull tight. And as you notice, the knots are coming tighter around the base of the eye look, that eye loop of the hook shaft. And now I'm actually just going to take the tag end of the line that's this side that was down by the bottom of the hook here and the rod end of the line and I'm just going to pull, pull tight away from each other just like that. Now what this did, yeah it's a knot, but why is this not important especially if you are first time fishing or taking your kids first time fishing, what is the one thing they like to do when they get a bite? Not set the hook, they like to start reeling, right? So this line is actually supposed to help them out. If you notice the line comes through this way and goes over the top of that the eyelid. So when the fit, ouch, these are very sharp hooks by the way. So the hook's sitting in the water like this, fish comes and bites it, they just start reeling. I'm going to assume it's probably kids fishing or you've just never fished before. So you forget to set the hook and you start reeling. The line actually goes like this and it uses that top of that eyelid, that top of that uh, eyelet of the hook as leverage and actually forces the tip of the hook up into the fish's mouth. So it works like that. So even if you forget to set the hook, just that little piece of leverage should help you out and bring in more fish. Okay, so now we're going to tie on our hooks that we're actually going to use to go fishing. Little size 4 octopus hook here. And we're going to do the same thing. Now it's clear line, so it's probably not going to show up the best in the camera. But Pull it tight, and there we go. Now I'm going to use that clippers and clip off the excess. I'm going to leave a little bit of excess here. So I'm going to leave a little bit of excess line. All right, and there we go. That is our hook, all tied on, ready to catch a fish. So the next step is going to be putting on the weights. So. I recommend putting the weight anywhere between six inches and a foot above the hook. Um, and then obviously your bobber, you got to set depending on how deep you're actually going to fish. I'm going to post a video, either some corner here, of how to set up a slip bobber. And the reason I want you to look at that is if you're fishing in deeper water, 
Um, you can't have your bobber set to five, six feet deep, especially if you're fishing with little kids. The reason is I'll be using something in the four, five foot range. And if they have six feet of line out, it's very hard for them to cast. Um, so I recommend a slip bobber type setup and I'll, I'll post that in the video. Now the, there's a couple key things with the weight here. One, you need to have a big enough weight to, uh, whoops, to actually make the bobber sit up and down in the water. Like if this is the water line, it should sit up and down. But you don't want to have too much weight to where the bobber's actually being sunk by the weight itself. These are split shot and these are removable split shot. They got not only the little uh, crevice to put the line in, but they also have these two little teeth that you can actually pinch to undo these from the line so you can reuse them. So first thing you're gonna do, put the line through that little crevice right there in the weight and you should be able to pinch it shut with your hands, with your fingers, just to hold it in place. Now we wanna pinch it so where it doesn't slide and that's where this thing comes in. It's actually pretty handy. It's got a little uh, weight pincher right there. And all I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put the weight right inside. Whoops. Okay, that's yeah, pretty close. And then I'm just gonna pinch it shut as hard as I can here. Most of them should pinch fairly easily. Whoops, there goes my bobber. And now it should not slide up and down the line because it is pinched fairly tight. This is our basic spring round bobber. Notice you push down the button, it exposes the, the hook on the bottom of the bobber right there. And if you hold that hook down with your middle finger and then you push up on the side of that button with your thumb, it exposes the hook on the top. So the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna push down on the button on the top and that hook on the top, and that's gonna expose the hook on the bottom here, just like that. And then you're going to, here, let's do it this way. I'm gonna push down on the thumb, thumb piece. And what you're gonna do is you're gonna wrap the line around that hook at least once because it's gonna prevent it from slipping. And then you're gonna let the button go and that hook's gonna go down. It's gonna be, it's not gonna slip. Now for precaution, I like to also do the top just one time. Now, some people say it's better to have the white facing down in the water because it looks like the sky and the fish can't tell. I honestly don't think it matters, but you can experiment for yourself. I'm gonna put the white up facing the sky. Um, so I'm actually gonna be seeing the white in the water, not the red. But the, the important thing is whichever side you want up above the water, it's gotta be pointing towards your rod tip. Okay, so my rod tip is going, the line to my rod tip is going this way, so I'm going to hook the, uh, the white side up. I'm going to put my middle finger on the bottom of that hook of the bobber, and then I'm gonna push down with my thumb on the side of the bobber, and I'm just gonna put the line through that hook that just got exposed, like that, and then I'm gonna let it go second bobber, the one I'm actually going to be using when I'm showing you how to fish these today, is the pencil or stick spring bobber, which is this one. Now this one, it's fairly easy. Uh, it's only got one little notch and one spring, so you don't have to uh, put the line through both the top and bottom, like that other round bobber. So all you're going to do is you're going to take your index finger and your thumb put it on the top of the spring and pull it down towards the body of the bobber and it's gonna expose this little notch right here. You're then gonna take the line and thread it through that notch. And you probably wanna wrap it around at least once. And put that, oops, put the line through that notch a couple times as it's wrapped. And then you're gonna let that spring, we are gonna release that spring and that's gonna hold that bobber in place right there. Now, it's important to note, depending on what type of fish species you're going after, different size bobbers, um, these are probably pretty good for panfish. They're fairly small, um, but if you're going after larger fish, you obviously use larger bobbers. So there we have it. Hook, 
weight, bobber, all set up, ready to go fishing. Um, I actually already shot the uh, fishing from shore side of this video a while back when it was warmer. It's October now. I think I shot it back in August. Um, but I hope you enjoy that. And I'm going to ask you to do three things. First, if you like these how-to tutorials, hit that like button. Second thing is subscribe below or at the end of the video, see my face holding the crappie, you can click that. And the last thing is comment below if you want to see any more how-to tutorials or just any recommendations or ideas for fishing that you want to see happen in a YouTube video. I appreciate you watching. Let's go to the lake.